In this report, I'm going to present you a very interesting report by Somint Research published in Seeking Alpha discussing Nikola Motor. Is Nikola Motor and Nikola Trucks the investing of the truck of the future or is it lagging behind Tesla and other diesel trucks? Nikola Motor will compete with the biggest names in trucking, but it won't make a dent to market share until 2024. A very strong product lineup measures it can compete and potentially take 5 to 8% share of the new truck sales. Nikola trucks are expected to be competitive to diesel trucks mainly because they are more productive for truck operators. Manufacturing capacity and mass production, the vehicle is the biggest risk of the story. Vector IQ Acquisition Corporation, with stock symbol VTIQ, will be merging with Nikola Motors sometimes within the next couple of months. After the merger closes, the thicker symbol will change to NKLA. One share of VTIQ stock will convert into one share of NKLA stock because the merger is highly likely to close. In this report, we will uh, refer to the stock as NKLA throughout the article. This report will discuss Nikola Motor, its business prospects, and whether the stock offers a good investment opportunity. The article will review the trucking industry, Nikola's product competitiveness, manufacturing challenges, and revenue potential. Lastly, stock valuation will be also discussed. I want to state that I have no position in stock markets, I have no position in Nikola Motors, and I'm not paid for this article. Nikola is attempting to disrupt the trucking industry by designing and manufacturing fully electric vehicles that are both battery powered and fuel cell powered. Nikola expects to sell and deliver 12,000 class 8 trucks by 2024. More than 14,000 have been pre-ordered already. To put Nikola's ambitions in perspective, let's see where Nikola stands within the broader trucking industry. Since 2006, sales of Class 8 trucks in the United States have ranged from 95,000 to 284,000 per year. On average, manufacturers have sold about 193,000 trucks per year. Last year was a strong year, but this year sales started soft and worsened due to the virus situation. We expect sales will normalize in the 150,000 to 250,000 range after the virus ends and economies recover. We also estimate that replacement rates for Class 8 trucks are probably about 200,000 per year. Uh, and uh, uh, in the United States market, share of Class 8 sales is concentrating among seven brands and four companies, which is split approximately as follows. Daimler AG has 36% market share with its dominant Freightliner brand and the smaller Western Star. Packer has 30% market share, Volvo has 18% market share, Navistar has 14% market share, which is entirely driven by its international brand. Nikola is attempting to compete with these companies, which are the largest and most recognized manufacturers in the United States. Keep Tesla Semi in mind too. By projecting 12,000 unit sales in 2024, Nikola is expecting to grab approximately 5% to 8% share of the new truck sales, assuming a normalized market. I find that to be realistic target because it means Nikola will become a new player in the field. Expecting Nikola to grab this market share seems reasonable. Of course, a lot has to go right for this to become reality. Nikola trucks will need to prove better than comp competition. Can Nikola trucks compete with these trucks? Nikola expects to break through the trucking industry and grab market shares from the big boys with three main products. So now let's talk about Nikola trucks versus diesel trucks. The three main products of Nikola are Nikola 1, Nikola 2 and Nikola 3. Counterintuitively, counter the Nikola 3 TRE will be first to market. The Nikola 2 and Nikola 1 will follow after Nikola 3. The Nikola 3 will be battery electric vehicle and the Nikola 2 and Nikola 1 will be FCEF, fuel cell electric vehicles. Nikola 1 
Nicola 2 and Nicola 3 are class 8 trucks with 1000 horsepower and an expected maximum weight of 20,000 pounds. The weight is important because it eats into hauling capacity. So the more the truck weights, the lower its hauling capacity, which could impact revenue per truck. Although Nicola trucks appear to be heavier than the typical diesel trucks, it is expected to be lighter than battery-powered trucks such as Tesla Semi. Despite being heavier, it seems the Nicola truck will be a fair competition to the typical diesel truck because the weight difference is manageable. A typical diesel truck weighs approximately 17 to 19,000 pounds. If Nicola manages to produce its trucks at a weight of 20,000 pounds, then its hauling will only be reduced by approximately 1 to 3,000 pounds. My industry contacts tell me that that's not too much. Such weight differential will not meaningfully change the economics of operating the truck for an owner operator. That's good for Nikola trucks. Other key characteristics are expected to favor Nikola trucks, such as 100% fuel cost savings, approximately 60% savings on repair and maintenance, better torque and acceleration, equal refueling recharging time, and most importantly, zero emissions. I need to emphasize the last point because it is extremely important. The Nikola trucks are expected to generate zero emissions unlike the diesel trucks which are emission heavy. Where Nikola truck falls behind traditional diesel trucks and the Tesla Semi is pricing. With an expected price tag of $235,000 to $250,000, the Nikola trucks will be much more expensive than the competition. The National Automobile Dealers Association reports that an average new Class A truck sells for $117,000. The Tesla Semi is the Tesla Semi is expected to price at $150 to $180,000. Both are cheaper than Nikola trucks with their expected $235 to $250,000 price. So let me say again. Average Class A truck is selling about 117,000. Tesla Semi is expected to price between 150 to 180,000. Nikola One, Nikola trucks are expected to have a price tag of 235 to 250,000 dollars. However, because the operating costs of Nikola trucks are expected to be meaningfully lower than diesel trucks, it could make sense for operators to pay the hefty price tag. My analysis tells me that an owner operator would probably recoup his inc uh, incremental investment of 133,000 in as little as two to three years. That's amazing, isn't it? My industry contact tells me that truck operators typically hold their trucks for six to eight years, which means Nikola could turn out to be a good investment. That's a strong point in favor of the Nikola truck. But please, you do your own calculations in case these calculations from published and seeking alpha may not be correct. The payback analysis shows that shows that the point may be um, may be uh, meaningful nicola's biggest challenge is to be capable of manufacturing its trucks as low enough cost in order to convert pre-orders into actual deliveries this is the most critical factor for the stock to work with that in mind let's discuss the manufacturing if nicola delivers what it's promising to customers revenues will explode and the NKLA stock will likely skyrocket. Nikola expects to deliver 12,000 trucks by 2024, but still has to ramp up manufacturing capacity. There is little room for errors, as the characteristics discussed above must be achieved in order for the product to be competitive. Plenty of risks exist, and there is no guarantee Nikola will be able to do it. If they don't do it, Look down at NKLA stock likely to plummet. And Nikola has an ace up its sleeves in manufacturing. 
Nikola formed a, J, a joint venture with CNH Industrial, the parent company of leading heavy truck manufacturer Iveco and FPT Industrial. The JV, the joint venture secured Iveco's manufacturing facility in all Germany for production of the Nikola Tre, the first Nikola truck. This means it. Uh, this means that Nikola will leverage Iveco's manufacturing capacity and expertise, which is an important strategic move that reduces manufacturing risk. This is good for NKLA stock. For those who don't know, Iveco is a leading truck manufacturer in Europe. However, plenty of manufacturing risks still exist. The Nikola Tre is currently under development so that it can be manufacturing in Germany. The manufacturing facility needs an estimated 40 million euro investment in upgrades. Meanwhile, the world is still under heavy travel restrictions due to the virus. The Nikola Tre is expected to hit the market in 2021, next year, but no one knows if it will be on schedule. Uh, chances are it will be delayed like we have seen many trucks and companies delayed for uh, from 2021 due to this current economic and social situation that we are all in. The Nikola 1 and Nikola 2 are expected to hit the market in 2023. These trucks are expected to be manufactured in Gulich, Arizona, where Nikola will build a shiny new manufacturing facility. This is where most of the manufacturing risk lies as Nikola needs to not only manufacture highly complex hydrogen trucks, but also needs to build an entire factory that can mass produce these trucks. All that without cost overruns, mind you, as those will likely be severely punished by Mr. Market. This is a huge uncertainty and the reason to treat this stock at high risk investment. Nikola has a strong product and has solved part of the manufacturing puzzle. So what is the revenue potential of Nikola? Before jumping in, it is important to clarify that our revenue analysis is specific to truck sales. The analysis excludes other revenues, which, is, uh, which we believe is the appropriate course of action at this stage. Nikola is a vertically integrated energy technology company with ambitions to run its own hydrogen refueling stations and sell other types of vehicles. However, the prospects for generating revenue with these activities is remote. For one thing, the economics of how two hydrogen stations will generate revenue remains dark. Additionally, Nikola is not expected to generate revenue with power sports vehicle before 2024, so I don't see why investors should expect that either. This is why I am only focused on truck sales revenue. In its most recent investor presentation, Nikola projected it will sell 12,000 trucks in 2024. Revenue should begin to flow in 2021 with sales of the Nikola Tre, followed by rapid growth from sales uh, of the Nikola 1 and Nikola 2. Okay, and uh, if it all goes well, Nikola Motor has potential to generate just a little under 3 billion in truck sales revenue by 2024, which, as discussed above, would be would mean it takes approximately 5 to 8% market share in the new, uh, new US truck sales. Nikola Motor is unlikely to be profitable by 2024 due to the heavy investment needed to ramp up manufacturing capacity. So this revenue potential is critical to uh, framing up company valuation, which comes next. Well, friends, let me know uh, what do you think uh, as, uh, as, as one who are interested in Nikola and uh, interested in this information. Nikola Motor is still in the very early stage as a company, which most of the growth ahead of it, uh, that is the appeal of the stock because, um, because with all the growth ahead of it, the upside potential is large. I believe Nikola could be one of the most appealing stories in the stock market that will not only cater 
sure to environmentally conscious investors, but also to individual and growth investors. However, there are lots of ifs. Nikola has to build its manufacturing capacity in Arizona. Nikola has to invest $40 million in uh, in the Iveco uh, manufacturing facility in, in Germany. And uh, with four years of lead time before revenue begins to seriously move in the needle, investors have plenty of time to wait and see and study their and do their homework. An investment in Nikola today is highly speculative. Uh, but if it all goes well, uh, Nikola has a strong upside potential. And like I said, I have no position in any of the stocks mentioned here. I'm not in the stock market. This is Armen Harayan from torquenews.com. And let me know what you think about Nikola 1, Nikola 2, and Nikola 3, and uh, Nikola versus Tesla, and Nikola versus uh, the diesel trucks. Uh, let's continue the discussion in the comment section below. In the meantime, this is Armin Harian from torquenews.com. Have a wonderful day, friends, and look for a couple of more interesting Tesla stories coming later today. God bless you and stay safe.